Greetings, Internet, and welcome back for another episode of Putting Shells on Shelves. That's right, we're back again, and as per the usual, we're talking turtles today. So, in the last episode, we were talking about the very first wave of the wacky action figures, which were basically just the turtles with some kind of fancy wind-up gimmick. Today, we're talking about another quartet of turtles. That's right, there's only four turtles to talk about today, and thankfully, there's only four to talk about today. <clears throat> now, to my knowledge with these figures, with this particular set, there is one variant, I believe, but I do not currently have this variant, at least I don't think so. I'd have to go back through my boxes and check and make sure I don't have it. But <clears throat> it's a variant with an accessory. So it's not necessarily important to have for, like, the, the whole quartet of figures. With that said, though, we're going to just jump right into this. Head start. We're going to just go straight from the ready, set, go. And I'm going to pick up a figure. I'm going to hold it up. And I'm going to talk to you about it. Now, before I get started just in case I wind up needing a refresher or something to remind me. There we go. I brought up the handy dandy little website that I keep using. So if there's a factoid that I forget about or I just get a faint glimpse of a memory of, I can bring that up and go dip dip dip, aha, and tell you about it. So when it comes to the particular set of four that I have, to my knowledge, they are all complete, which is actually kind of hard with one of the figures from the set. So, enough rambling, let's go. Ready, steady, go. Okay. First figure I'm going to show off is Leonardo the Sewer Samurai. Now, when it comes to this particular set, I think they're actually really cool. It was a, a very interesting idea for Playmates Toys to work on and to make a reality. Essentially, well, yeah, you'll get the gimmick as I go through all these. Now, they won't look like they're from the same set, but these four are, in fact, from the same set. So he comes with his little flag right there. He comes with a turtle shell shield right there. And on his back, he carries his katana, which has this fancy little scabbard, which you can snap together. Here, I'll demonstrate because it's already popped apart. Like, see right here how it's two separate pieces? It's easier to tell without the sword in there. But see how it's two individual pieces? What you would do is you would basically just flip it around Leonardo's neck and shoulder like that. And then you snap it together. I don't want to force it too much because I don't want to break this guy or the accessory, but you'd pop it together like that. And then you take the sword and you just stick it in there like this. Ta-da! But over time, you know, because the plastic shrank, it doesn't exactly fit around Leonardo perfectly anymore, giving the illusion that Leonardo's put on a couple pounds. Which is odd to think about because, you know, he's got that turtle shell. And to my knowledge, they don't exactly expand like a, like a crab shell when they get bigger. But anyway, he's dressed up like a samurai, and he's ready to go out there and kick foot. And personally, I just think this is another one of the coolest sculpts that they did. This guy was actually from fairly early on in the series. If, if memory serves me correctly, I could be wrong. I've got the website right there to refresh myself if I am. But this Leonardo, along with the others, came out in 1989. And just so that I'm not putting my foot in my mouth, because that would be gross. I'm going to pull up the webpage real quick and back up. Just one thing. Okay, so I was, in fact, incorrect. These four came out in the year 1990. And now you know. Now, like I said before, to my knowledge, these guys are all complete. He's got his belt, which I think is the correct one. I forget if this guy was supposed to have the blue letter L. So, just for my own peace of mind, we're going to go back to that website. Mm -hmm. Leo the Super Samurai. And there's the one that's in the packaging. Yep, he has the correct belt on. Okay, I just wanted to be doubly sure. 
because I hate going, this thing is just like this, and this is how it's manufactured, and this is the way it's supposed to be. And then just, like, researching a little bit after the video and going, I was wrong. I told the internet in tr untruths. I was incorrect. Oh my god. And, you know, that kind of nonsense. But anyway, he's got a, a nice sculpt going on. He's got nice paint detailing, as a lot of figures from early on in the series did. And they actually managed to paint most of the major details, and they managed to do so fairly well. Except I just noticed on this shin guard, they added a little bit too much paint right there in the middle, making that one little strip of whatever material that's supposed to be like that wide when it's supposed to be like this wide. But as I was saying, he comes with his, well, as I was saying initially, because with his katana, his shell shield, his banner, and his sheath. Oh, and the katana, if I didn't already say that. So yeah. He also came with four red pieces of plastic as like shin, or uh, thigh, and shoulder guards. Which, unfortunately, most of the time when you find this figure, at least one, if not all of those, will be missing along with the accessories and the belt. Okay, so that's Leo the Sewer Samurai. Next, we're going to jump on straight to the next one on the table in front of me in a this way formation instead of a that way formation. So here we go. Ready, set, go. We have Raphael the Space Cadet. Now, obviously, Samurai and Spacemen don't usually go together in the same sentence. But then again, Teenage Mutant, Ninja, and Turtles don't always usually go together. But here we are. So with Raphael the Space Cadet, he came with a removable plastic helmet, which is one of those accessories that's either always missing, or... Actually, mine's not in that bad a condition, but they're almost always yellowed to a certain degree. Not sure how well y'all will be able to tell. But that's supposed to be a clear plastic, and clearly, it isn't. Turn off the flashlight real quick. But anyway, he comes with that. He comes with his cyber space sword. His cy... Anyway, he comes with a sword, and he comes with this blaster which is attached to his spacesuit using a yellow hose right there. And the yellow hose is one of the pieces that's like almost always missing when you find this figure, along with the helmet, like I was saying before. So it's pretty hard to find a complete, loose Raphael the Space Cadet. I'm very happy to have the one that I own, which is right here in front of you on the screen. He also came with one and only one sticker detail, which is that bit right there, which is just like, you know, a chest decal. He also came with a bunch of interesting sculpting. Like, he's got a little alien stuck onto his back. He's got, like, his almost Buzz Lightyear kind of hood going on. That, interestingly, his bandana, there's the word I'm looking for, is clipped onto, like a pair of goggles which I think he actually might be wearing a pair of goggles over the top of his bandana. There you have Raphael, the Space Cadet. So moving on from him, we're going to do another quick little Ready, Set, Go as I set him down. So, Ready, Set, Go. This is one of the hardest figures of this set to find loose and complete. Because Donatello, or should I say undercover Donatello, not to be confused with undercover Donatello. Well, there is that version, and then there is this guy. Uh, as I was saying, this is one of the hardest of these four figures to find 100% complete, unless you're counting the file card, in which case mine is not 100%. I might have the file card packed away somewhere. But anyway, <clears throat> because of one very dumb little piece of rubber, plastic, vinyl. Because, as you can probably tell, Donatello is wearing a mask, which looks similar to if Groucho Marx and Bozo the Clown had a child. 
and that mask is held on with a little plastic strap. And yes, it is plastic, I just confirmed it by grabbing onto the side of it. And this silly little piece of plastic is notorious for being missing. Like the little kid who got these for their Christmas or birthday or whenever for whatever, just didn't pull this out of the packaging along with the rest of the accessories and more than likely they just got thrown away. But if you remove the mask, like I'm trying to and I finally just succeeded, that's what Donatello looks like underneath it. Basically just the original 1988 sculpt with a you know, little fedora hat going on. And as I was just saying before I interrupted myself, see this very thin little strip of plastic right here with a little nub on the end? That is notorious for being missing from this figure because it actually comes apart from the mask itself. And like I said, probably a lot of kids didn't realize what this was and they just kind of threw it away with the packaging. I thankfully was able to find one in a big box of Ninja Turtle figures and accessories at a local toy shop and was able to get it from them. He came with this weird mask with the strap. He came with a gun with the word bang on it, you know, one of those joke guns. And he came with a briefcase. And he also came with one other little accessory that you put into the briefcase. Just give me a minute to carefully remove the briefcase from his hand without busting the handle off of it. There we are. Another piece that I believe is kind of uncommon to find when you're finding this figure out in the wild, loose that is, is a little black molded piece of food. And I don't mean black mold as in, you know, moldy food. I mean the same color plastic as the suitcase. He came with this itty bitty teeny tiny pepperoni pizza slice. Also another thing that's uh, notorious for being missing or being extremely damaged is the briefcase came with these little sticker decals in it. I'm trying my best to show that off. And now unfortunately the ones in mine, as you can probably tell, are starting to peel up, but with just a little bitty dab of glue, but like a glue stick glue, you get a toothpick and you just like smear that underneath it and smush it down. That will usually get those to those stickers to hold back in place. The pizza, like I was saying, is another piece that's really hard to find with this guy. Not as hard to find as this stupid mask strap. So with that said, I'm going to put his top secret pizza back in his briefcase and gently close it up. Then we're going to put his briefcase back in his little tiny hand. All right, come on, don't tell it. Take it. Thank you. And of course, to keep his identity secret, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, we're going to put his mask back on and we're going to clip it firmly back onto his head. Now there's nothing really too big and bad about this figure to talk about. I mean, it's literally just Donatello in a torn up, beat up old trench coat wearing a fedora and a mask. But I've got to say for the simplicity of the figure, he's a good figure. And also, there is actually a little bit of a customization community built up around this figure because the other undercover figure that I mentioned was part of a later wave where it's literally the four turtles in cloth trench coats with different colored accessories. And those are extremely hard to find. Those things are rare. And if you can't find them, more than likely, they're going to cost you a fair amount of money. Not as much as a scratch would cost you, but still. Anyway, um, yeah, there's a customization community built up around this figure where people will just buy four of these guys loose without accessories and they'll just paint the other three up like Leonardo, Michelangelo, and Raphael. That way they can be like, I've got the four disguised turtles, ha ha ha. And you can go, yeah, yeah, you've got the four disguised turtles, sure you do. So anyway, that's him. 
Oh, and a couple little things I forgot to mention. He's packing a dagger right there, and it looks like he might have a pocket watch or something right there. But yeah, that's Undercover Donatello from the Disguised Turtles. And now the last of the four figures, the only one with a variation to my knowledge, is Sewer Surfer Michelangelo. And technically there's two variations now that I think about it, but we'll discuss the other one at a later date. So Michelangelo the Sewer Surfer, he's got this whole cool surfer dude thing going on, which basically if you go back and watch the cartoons, obviously he had the surfer thing going on. He's got his swim fins going on down there, he's got his little shark buddies on his elbow and on his shoulder. May I have him positioned makes it look like he's having a little conversation with that guy and he's like mocking you. He also came with the surfboard, which I, I think I already showed it off. And that came with another little quote unquote buddy for him. A little crab right here by my ring finger. And it came with an accessory that goes on this end, which is a bladed thing, I think. That essentially, you know, you pop it on there and he can just, like, mow down the foot soldiers with this thing. If it'll rotate. Now, one thing with this figure that is notoriously missing, as a matter of fact, this was the first one I found after a long while of searching that still had it. But that little sticker on his chest, because obviously kids played with this guy in the pool or in the bathtub or wherever they had fresh water or just a body of water they could play in. That sticker, along with the sticker on the surfboard itself, which if I look right here, it says Cowabunga on it. Not the elk can probably see that too well. Those stickers are usually and notoriously damaged just from, you know, taking the figure off and on and you know, running him around through the water like, surf's up, dude, and then eventually the water gets into the sticker and it just comes off, yada, yada, yada. Now, when it comes to Michelangelo here, his outfit does have some very nice sculpting and paint detail. You'll have to pardon me, I just had dinner not too long ago. And he's got some funny little things going on, like he's got a squid on his swim fin right here. He's got seaweed, like just tucked in all these different little nooks and crannies and areas all over his swim outfit. And he just screams 90s. I mean, look at those almost eye bleed inducing colors. He's got the neon pink, he's got the blues, he's got those greens, the bright orange. Party dude indeed, Mike. Party dude indeed. Oh, and I just realized he has an eel coming out of the back of his swimsuit. Alright, so on that note, ladies, gentlemen, dudes, dudettes, and all other machinations of being, if you like what you've seen here today, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that little bell icon to be notified of future uploads once you are subscribed. You'll be glad you did. And feel free to share my videos with your friends. If you think they'll like them, heck, even if you're not sure, you could be surprised. So on that note, this is your old buddy Oxlimation saying, Cowabunga, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Later.